Now, to me at least, it's always kind of made sense that the pay-per-view after WrestleMania would be a backlash. I know for a while in the rotation you had extreme rules, but backlash makes sense to me as that next pay-per-view offering after Mania. Because you could sit there and say you have storylines that are going to blow off at Backlash because you can't finish everything off at WrestleMania. You have stuff that maybe started at WrestleMania and therefore you're going to advance that story at Backlash. You're going to have other things where the story had a step in the process at WrestleMania. It's going to continue at Backlash. It's a follow-up to that. So I like the thought of having the Backlash pay-per-view and the name and everything else right after WrestleMania. But then we get start getting into the silly and stupid season where WWE focuses on this shit that really doesn't matter, which then frankly leads to some of us focusing on the shit that doesn't matter. But instead of just calling it Backlash, now we've got to call it WrestleMania Backlash. And it's just dumb. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Like the same company and the same ding-dong in Vince McMahon that wanted to get rid of the number in WrestleMania because he said it made the event feel old, even though that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of because you have the Super Bowl where they put the number, the Roman numerals at the end of it every year, which, if anything, adds to the prestige of the event because it's been around that many years. But not in Vince World. Got to get rid of that number because it makes it feel old. Just really dumb, asinine, senile thought processes coming out of the Titan Tower machine sometimes. And changing the name here to WrestleMania Backlash, like, why would you want to add... It's almost like you're making it into a rock tour, like the WrestleMania tour. And it'd be something if you were doing, like, an old uh, European post-mania tour. Like, maybe I get it, but you're not. And, and this is your way to try to compensate. It's just dumb. Like it doesn't look as good on a shirt. It's just stupid. Now, you could get away with that if absolutely everything involved tied into WrestleMania. But of course, it doesn't. Some of the matches at WrestleMania Backlash do tie back to WrestleMania, do have a continuation off of WrestleMania, and some of them absolutely don't. Now, I'm not saying that every match necessarily needs to, but if you're actually going to call it WrestleMania Backlash, then every match probably should. This is just, just my thought. You know, just me being, Hey, great on the yells of the clouds! But anyways, I digress. Um, but you look at the card. As of the time of me recording this, I, I was able to find six announced matches for the show. Hopefully it stays around six, not much more than that. Hey, you know what? Let's get in, get on with it, and get the fuck done with our Sunday night. I think everybody is down for that. I know I certainly am. Like The SmackDown Tag Team Championship match was an example to me of this may have been something that you've been playing up a little bit on TV the past couple of weeks, but this absolutely has nothing to do with WrestleMania at all because these guys didn't work a tag title match at WrestleMania. you got the Mysterios, Ray and Dominic versus the Dirty Dogs, Robert Roode, and <laughs> fucked off Ziggler. Like this... It's already stupid because it's got Dolph. But beyond all of that, if you don't put the straps on the Mysterios here, it just feels really weird. And what's the point? And then I would come back and say, well, why did you put the straps on him here? Why didn't you build it up instead and position it to be on the WrestleMania show when you had two nights of Mania? I'm just saying. Uh, but you've got like the Lumberjack match. It's Damian Priest versus The Miz. And... This one makes sense. This ties into what happened at WrestleMania. This is a follow-up. This is a continuation. It's very clear that they see some big things in Damian Priest, and I'm not necessarily misaligned with that. So you want to put him in this situation against other feature performers and give him some signature victories. I don't know if you need the Lumberjack match stipulation, but you've thrown it in there. It's whatever. Um, but... A good opportunity for Damian Priest to come out showing well, working with a quality, credible mid-card heel in The Miz. Like These are the types of guys that Damian Priest should be working with to help build him up and start moving him up the ladder. And again, it's a follow-up to WrestleMania, so I'm good with that. 
You'd be stunned, I think, if Damian Priest doesn't win this match, but it's WWE, so you just never fucking know. Um, but then you get to the Raw Women's Championship Triple Threat. And, and to me, as far as I'm concerned, this could have just been Asuka versus Rhea Ripley for a second time. But no, 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 no! She's got more plastic surgery. Bitch has got to force her way in. You knew Charlotte was going to find her way into this mix at some fucking point. What's the appeal? Why do people like her? Seriously, like, what is it? And I know I cut, like, an annual video reminding everybody of just how much she sucks, but I feel like every year it is important to remind you of just how much she sucks. Like, she's got all of the worst qualities of John Cena and Randy Orton combined. And it just amalgamates into this one vacuum of suck in the women's division of whichever show she's on. Like, if you're going to force her into this match at some point, you might as well continue down that path and just have her win the fucking title. Now, realistically, what should be happening is Rhea Ripley pins Asuka and then maybe you start off with her and Charlotte because that's where a story is that you could play off of post-WrestleMania Backlash. But um, I hate triple threats in general. I don't think this was called for here. Although you could make some argument that, hey, Charlotte was in that position and then there had to be an audible called. So I'm not going to gripe about that one as much as I would like the WWE championship one. Um, but if Rhea Ripley doesn't retain here, like everything you did at WrestleMania was stupid. Then the SmackDown women's championship, you know, Bailey and Bianca Belair, like you're picking this right back up from the little mini feud that they were having, you know, on the road to WrestleMania. But where the fuck is Sasha Banks been? Sasha's the one that lost the title. Like, just really weird utilization, or in this case, lack of utilization, of somebody that was your women's champion for several months. You, like, completely have thrown her to the side. And to be fair, like, if we're looking at WWE, are you all that surprised? Like, this should absolutely be a good showcase match for Bailey and Bianca to have a good match and for Bianca to go over clean. The only other thing you can maybe do is have... Sasha get involved here and fuck it up and gum up the works, but, you know, is that that important to you? Because clearly it had been that important to have Sasha on TV the past month, so why the hell would you care to have her interfere now? Um, and then the WWE Championship Triple Threat, like Drew and Bobby Lashley going one-on-one, -on -one, I'm perfectly fine with that. Makes sense. You can make that work. They just wrestled at WrestleMania, so you follow that up. But then here comes whining, pissing, bitching Braun Strowman. And now you're forcing yet another fucking triple threat. Like, this shit is just lazy. If you want Braun to get a title shot, then have him face Bobby Lashley one-on-one. -on -one. If you want Braun to do a job, so that way you can squeeze out another Drew McIntyre-Bobby Lashley match... Well, then instead, ding dong, dumb dicks, think of all types of different creative finishes that you could do to still get you to that place for another Drew and Lashley match. Like, to me, it's this unnecessary place where this company puts themselves into a hole, into a foxhole, where they have to go here, and they just don't have to. Like, why do you do that? Like, one triple threat on a card, to me, is bad enough. Now you've got two of them. At least, like I said, with the Raw Women's Championship match, there's some type of story there. For the WWE Championship triple threat, you had to manufacture and create a story that really isn't there. So for the first one, even though it's Charlotte and annoys the shit out of me, I could totally and completely justify that. Like, that makes sense. That should be the only triple threat on the damn card. Stop getting lazy. And stop booking yourselves and writing yourselves in these stupid situations. You would assume Lashley would retain? He better. He should be on a long run here. And then we get to the WWE Universal Championship. Like, this should have been where you did the blow-off, maybe, between Roman and Daniel Bryan. Now, I understand that maybe there were contract, nudge, nudge, wink, wink factors at play here. But storyline wise, playing off of WrestleMania, like this is where you should have had the blow off to Daniel Bryan and Roman. This is where Daniel Bryan should have lost and he has to leave the brand. Instead, you did it on SmackDown. 
Like, it just felt like it was rushed. And I understand there were nudge, nudge, wink, wink, some reasons for that. But now you get to potentially your main event of WrestleMania Backlash involving two people that has absolutely nothing to do with WrestleMania and Cesaro and Roman Reigns. Um, at least I will say this. I would expect this match to be really damn good. Because here you could say, if nothing else, Cesaro can bring the goods in the ring. He is believable. He brings a physicality, a strength. He brings some notable shit into the match. He can really incorporate and work well with Roman. And now you're talking about being able to potentially feed Jay into that and or Jimmy into that. Like they could, you could have a couple of Cesaro swings during the match and still not have to do it to our tribal chief, the head of the table. Like there's the potential that this match could absolutely be fantastic and also have some very interesting dynamics in terms of storytelling. But that said, Jimmy needs to fall in line and acknowledge his damn tribal chief. Don't be hard headed like your damn brother Jay. Learn and learn quickly. It's okay to make mistakes. What's not okay is to refuse to learn from them. You're in a better position because you're associated with the top dot guy in damn WWE now. He's the head of the table. He's the tribal chief. He's the big dog. He's all that and so much more. And Cesaro should be incredibly thankful that he's in a position where he can sit there and get this main event pay-per-view payout. It's like, ha ha, oh, thank you, Roman. I do look forward to this match. For those of you that say, I don't think Cesaro is really worthy of that, like, you know, I have my different thoughts on that, but this is the type of guy in these types of secondary pay-per-views, it's okay to bump up a little bit and have him take on a champion, gives you a little filler, buys you a little time, has a little bit of a fresh matchup in some respects, um, but it's also an opponent that gears really well towards Roman's strengths, and Roman can gear really well, and Jay and Jimmy can gear really well towards Cesaro's strengths, so I would expect that this match could be really awesome. I would also be surprised if we don't get some type of sh other shenanigans at some point in time, but maybe we won't. Maybe we'll save that. Um, but either way, looking at WrestleMania Backlash, like the hope for me is that some of these matches will deliver so it'll feel like a better than average like secondary pay-per-view for this company. I'd expect Cesaro and Roman could potentially tear the house down a little bit. Uh, but who knows? If anything else, three hours or less on Sunday night, that's all I ask for. Just keep it short, sweet, and to the point, WWE, please.